Hey guys, uh, welcome. Yeah, so when it comes to solving cubic polynomials, we don't have a lot of tools. We hope that there are some or difference of cubes, and if not, because we know how to factor some and difference of cubes, but if they're not that, then we hope that we can do some kind of group factoring, not a lot of other tools. Well, recently I showed you how to derive the cubic formula, so now you have that as an option, but here's a great other option called Cardano's method. Um, Really, the way that we derive the cubic formula is using Cardano's method. Uh, but as you'll see in practice, Cardano's method here will look a little bit different from how we derive the cubic formula, although there are a lot of like overlaps uh, in the approach. For example, to start, what we're going to do here is depress the, gi the given cubic. And when we derived the cubic formula, that's the first thing that we did. Uh, we took a standard cubic written in the form um, ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d equals zero, and we depressed it. Yeah? So again, when we do Cardano's method, just like what we did in the derivation of the cubic formula, we have to, to start depress the cubic. Okay, now every cubic that's written in this form can be depressed by making the substitution that uh, y be equal to x plus b over 3a. In my derivation of the cubic formula, I assumed that a is 1 because, well, if a is not 1 to start, you could just divide everything by a and make sure that a is 1. Yeah? Okay, 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 cool, cool. Uh, but yeah. So, so uh, this substitution uh, will depress this cubic to be of the form x cubed uh, plus uh, px plus q uh, is equal to zero, and there, thereby getting rid of the square term. That's what uh, depressing the cubic means, uh, getting rid of the square term in the standard cubic and having uh, something of this form. And again, this substitution will always allow you to depress uh, your given cubic that has all the terms, yeah? Okay, okay, okay. So the substitution then here in this specific um, example is y is equal to x plus b is negative 3 over 3 times a is 1. That is y is equal to x minus 1. And you see now that this is a carefully chosen cubic, right? Okay, um, now what this says is that x is equal to y plus 1, right? That x is equal to y plus 1. So we have our substitution handy for depressing this cubic, and that is making x equal to y plus 1, right? OK, so there is that. And I need the space, but don't need this now. So here. OK, now. Um, Using this substitution, let's depress this cubic and write it in this form. So um, that means that x cubed is uh, y plus 1 cubed. And then we have minus 3 times y plus 1 squared. That's minus 3x squared plus 12 times. You get it. OK, now. Um, yeah, however, you've learned to expand binomials. I have videos on them. Um, you should know that y plus 1 all cubed is y cubed plus 3y squared, and then plus 3y plus 1. And then y plus 1 squared is y squared plus 2y plus 1. But we have a minus 3 in front of it, so minus 3y squared minus 6y minus 3. All right, OK. And then uh, plus 12y plus 12 plus 16 is equal to 0. Fit it all in. Uh, uh. OK. <laughs> OK, so, so, so. As we said, the substitution should get rid of the square term. So that's that, right? Now, um, this here, this here, and this here combine to a 9y, right? So it means we have y cubed and then uh, plus 9y. And then the constants, this guy, this guy make negative 2. With this, make positive 10. And then <laughs> with this, make positive 26. Yeah? Equals 0. Now, instead of y, we could have used t. So here, you would have had t cubed plus 9t plus uh, 26 is equal to 0. But whatever. Like, the variable change doesn't make a big difference. And so, you know, it's uh, not really like a shock that I'm using x here. It's just variable name change. Yeah? But what I'm saying now is that our depressed cubic 
uh, is um, here. We are uh, done with depressing our cubic. We're going to be kind and solve it the rest of the way. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. All right. So, where to from here? Well, as soon as you are done depressing your cubic, when you're using Cardano's method, the next step is always to do this. Whatever uh, variable you used uh, for y, you take that. So here, y. So if you use t, you take t and set it equal to uh, u plus v. Yeah? OK, because now look here. Um, this uh, will mean that we could write the u cubed, uh, sorry, y cubed rather, is equal to u plus v all cubed. If y is equal to u plus v, obviously y cubed is um, u plus v all cubed. But then that means that y cubed is equal to uh, u cubed plus v cubed, and then it's uh, plus 3uv times u plus v. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, u plus v all cubed is really u cubed plus 3u squared v plus 3uv squared um, plus v cubed. This is that there. But I could put the u cubed and v cubed first, and then I could factor out a 3uv from these two, and then I'll have this. Well, I like this because well, I said that y is u plus v. So instead of u plus v right here, I could just write a y. And then if I move everything to the left side, everything that's on the right side, if I move it to the left side, I could write uh, y cubed minus 3uvy, and then it's uh, minus uh, u cubed plus v cubed sum. It's equal to 0. I've moved everything that's over here to the left, so yeah, I have to have a 0 on the right side. Yeah? Okay, cool, cool, cool. Now, we compare this here to the depressed cubic. Um, um, I should call it something else. Like, I'm tired of calling it depressed cubic, because it's happy. Like Pharrell, 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 Pharrell. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, so silly, but um, 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 so so that means that negative um, three uv is equal to nine, right? And uh, it means that uh, u cubed plus v cubed is equal to negative twenty six. Yes, negative twenty six. Not an accident, right? Because if this is negative 26, I'll have negative, negative 26, and therefore a positive 26. Okay, now here, this amounts to dividing by negative 3 on both sides, uh, saying that uv is equal to negative 3. What we had had is the same as what I just wrote. Yeah, okay, okay. Um, now, we can then say that u cubed v cubed is equal to negative 27. Okay, and... Um, then um, we have uh, this, and we observe something really nice, which is, well, if we considered a quadratic that had u cubed and v cubed as a zero or as a solution, then um, we have uh, the quadratic handy. That is, we can write the quadratic because, well, we have the product of the roots and the sum of the roots, right? And so if we have the product of the roots and the sum of the roots, uh, we could write uh, a quadratic like this, t and then minus u cubed times t uh, minus uh, v cubed uh, equals zero. And this quadratic is solved by uh, u cubed and v cubed. So u cubed and v cubed are solutions to this quadratic. And um, as I said, if we uh, like, you know, expand uh, or multiply these two bi binomials, we're going to get t squared and then minus uh, u cubed plus v cubed uh, t and then uh, plus u cubed v cubed equals zero. So, 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 this is the product of the roots and this is the sum of the roots. And we know both of those values. The product of the roots is right here and the sum of the roots is right there. And that's what I meant by like, uh, now we could uh, use u cubed and v cubed to solve a quadratic because, well, yeah, you get it, you get it, you get it. Um, okay, okay. Um, and if you don't get it, ask questions. Okay. Now, uh, since uh, u cubed plus v cubed is uh, 
negative 26, this here is negative 26. All right? And then this here is uh, negative 27. So our quadratic is uh, t squared uh, plus 26t plus 26t and then uh, minus 27 uh, equals 0. And the solutions to this quadratic are going to be u cubed and v cubed. Now, um, it's really lucky that our quadratic is factorable and simple. At this stage in Cardano's method, this quadratic may be very cumbersome to solve. That is, like it may require that you complete the square and so on. Remember, if you have to complete the square, some square roots may be involved on the right-hand side, right? Okay, and so what I'm saying is what you get for t may involve square roots, and then in turn, uh, when you say t is equal to u cubed and t equals v cubed, you take the cube root of something that already had a square root, so you get this cumbersome expression as your answer, as your final answer, if your cubic is not so nicely chosen. And so I chose this uh, particular cubic for this reason, which is the quadratic is pretty simple and it just illustrates Cardano's method. But yeah, those kind of like really cumbersome answers may at times simply very nicely to like an integer um, so just a heads up that and uh, this step in Cardano's method the next few steps may look like really weird but uh, it might still turn out really nice after getting weird um, <laughs> okay am I still talking about math what 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 okay all right um, <laughs> um, okay so this quadratic nothing weird about it uh, it's just um, t plus uh, 27 times t minus 1 is equal to 0, right? So we get t is equal to negative 27, uh, and then t is equal to 1. But one of the t's is u cubed, and the other t is v cubed, right? Um, based on the factoring we had and the way we constructed the quadratic in the first place, right? And it doesn't matter which, right? Um, it's just, you know, we could have, instead of u, q, u plus v, we could have written v plus u, so it doesn't matter which one of these is u cubed and which one is v cubed. So let's just say that this one is the u cubed and this one is the v cubed simply because we wrote them in that order. Okay, okay, so then that means u is negative 3 and then v is positive 1. Nice. Uh, so then y is equal to u plus v, which is negative 3 plus 1, which is negative 2. So x, which is um, y plus 1, is negative 2 plus 1, which is negative 1. Nice. So we just found one of the x's that solves this cubic. And I already had videos uh, on synthetic division and the rational root theorem and everything. But um, actually, we don't need the rational root theorem here. Uh, since we already have a zero, but yeah, I already taught you synthetic division, lots of fun videos on synthetic division, so check them out, but basically let's uh, finish the job. I did name drop on completing the square, so um, after the next step we'll get to complete the square on, on a quadratic, so we'll get to see that, but yeah, basically since we now know that one zero is negative one, we can do synthetic division um, and factor our cubic into a quadratic and a linear. So that's 1 minus 3, and then 12, and then 16, right? So this is the synthetic division, in case I've lost you. So 1, negative 1, negative 4, uh, 4, 16, minus 16, 0. We knew it had to work out because, well, we found 1, 0. So 1, 0 of our cubic is x equals negative 1. The other zeros come from solving this quadratic, which is 1x squared minus 4x plus 16. So equals 0. <laughs> like, right? OK. And, and so to solve this quadratic, right, we observe that we could write it first as x squared minus 4x plus 4 plus 12 equals 0, which amounts to saying that this here equals negative 12, and then that means x minus 2 o squared is equal to negative 12, which in turn means x minus 2 is equal to plus u minus, <laughs> um, um, I don't know what that was, 2i root 3, right? 
And so uh, the other two zeros of our cubic are the two complex numbers, uh, 2 plus or minus 2i root 3. Yeah, okay, cool, 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 cool. I hope you enjoyed this, and yeah, keep watching. Take care.